Let's add some grain to our Spark AR filter. Okay, so to get started, we will of course need some grain images. So Film Composite has some awesome free film assets. So you can scroll through, they have all different sorts of grain. For this example, I'm going to use the scratches. So I can click there, and they have six different images of film scratches. So if we click on an image, we'll have here a link to download free. Then also they have the recommended blend mode. Uh, so as we overlay this over something, they recommend to use the hard light blend mode. So uh, we don't need that yet, let's just keep it in mind. So go ahead and just download all your images that you want to use. And once you've done that, we're going to open them up in our graphics editor. You can use Photoshop, you can use GIMP. Here I'm using Affinity Photo. So all I did was I created an image 720 pixels wide by 1280 tall. I wouldn't go any larger than that. And since this is just an overlay, we could go smaller. So I set up my image. I imported my six um, grain images uh, or scratches I downloaded. And as I toggle off these layers, you can see that each one looks different. And for a dynamic grain, that's exactly what we want. Now, I only have six images here, but if we want more, I can actually just duplicate some of these layers and then just slide it over. And I'll duplicate again and I'll slide it the other way. Now, for a single image I downloaded, I now have three different frames. So as I toggle these off, you can see each of those three, it's the same base image, but since I moved it, I'm getting three for the price of one. So I went ahead and did that for all six of these layers, and then I exported them all as different images. So I have 18 total grain images, and now I'm ready to head into Spark. Okay, so we're here in Spark. I just have a blank project open. So let's just expand the previews so we can see what's going on a little better. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here, add asset, and I'm going to select animation sequence. Now, we could just import a single frame if we don't need it moving, if we just want some static grain. Uh, but I think it looks a little better if it's more dynamic. So animation sequence, I'm just going to call it grain. Now up here, I'm going to choose file and I'm going to select all my different frames I exported. Open, and now take just a second. And once it finishes processing, we'll have an animation sequences folder um, with our animation, and then we'll have all of our textures imported as well. So now that we have our animation sequence, let's come over here uh, to our scene going to right click and add a canvas and inside of my canvas I'm going to add a rectangle. Now we can see our rectangle up here so I want this to fill width, fill width and fill height. Let's give it a new material. I'm going to rename this call this grain mat. Now, the uh, setup is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to change the shader type to flat. For the texture, I'm going to choose grain. And now you can see this here. Now, if we remember when we downloaded our images, uh, they're recommending the blend mode of hard light. So now we come over here and we have blend mode alpha. We open that up, but there's not an option for hard light. Our blend modes are pretty limited. Uh, so we can click through, if we try multiply, it kind of works, but you can see it darkens the entire image. Um, so what we can do is we can actually adjust the colors of our grain so that it overlays a little better. So let's change this back to alpha just for a minute so we can see the whole grain. So you can see it's a gray background with the black scratches. 
So if I come back to my graphics editor and grab the eyedropper, uh, you can see our red, green, and blue values are each at 127. So if I select that color and set it, um, our lightness value is right in the middle at 50. So it's just like a neutral gray color. So coming back to Spark, um, we're going to remap our grain from a black to gray to a black to white image. And then the multiply blend mode will work a lot better. So I'm going to go to view, I'm going to show the patch editor. Now I just need to use a couple patches. So I'm going to click this arrow next to texture on our material. Then I'm going to take our animation sequence, click and just drag that in. And if we hook that up, we'll see no difference. This is just the same as selecting that texture over in the material settings. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to type in from, and we want from range. So we can think of black as having a value of zero and white has a value of one. Uh, it's like full brightness, no brightness. So we're going to take our values, map them from our black to gray scale to a black to white scale. So add patch. Now our min value is going to be zero because we have the black. Max, we're going to set to 0 0.5 because that's kind of our neutral gray. I'll plug the RGBA inputs into the from range. I'll put that here. Now you can see we have a white background. Uh, it's still kind of tinted gray, so we can bump this down to 0 0.4 to get a little more stark difference. So all we've done is we've just taken our base gray image with black grain and just remapped it so that the black scratches are on top of white. Now, depending on your grain image, you may or may not need to do this. Um, but for my particular images, I did have to remap. So I come back to my material and change the blend modes to multiply. Now that is a lot better. You can see uh, the scratch is showing up. But if I toggle off my rectangle, you can see I'm not really changing the tone of the overall scene. Now the last difference I'm going to make, I'm just going to select my animation sequence. I'm going to slow this down to 12 frames per second. So the grain lingers a little longer. And now I'm ready to start rolling um, my other effects and making sure that my grain kind of still fits in with that. Uh, one last thing you can do is um, we're looping through each of the 18 frames uh, sequentially. If you want to vary it a little more, we can select randomize. So we're still going through all 18 frames, but in no particular order. So from this point on, it's just adding in any other effects. Uh, you can adjust the sliders. Uh, so actually, if we bring our opacity down, uh, the green gets a little more prominent. So if you want it to be a little more visible, uh, just put these sliders until you get the effect that you want. And that is that.